world's a better place because you are here to join us. My name is Matt Brown, and I am the host of the Productive Conversations podcast. We have a nice special edition of this podcast right here in the middle of the week, and we are going to answer some of life's and the internet's biggest questions once again. It's about to get real. It's about to be profound. And we are going to definitely take something out of this next podcast. Ryan and Cara are here with me tonight. <laughs> Excuse me. What's going on? That much lofty expectations that we're going to learn anything from the three of us talking. But I'm excited to, get, mm-hmm. to jump back into the internet's questions again. It's been I a while. So much to teach everyone. I got a lot <laughs> going on up here. Professor hey. Kara has the answers. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. So let's just help each other out. And we got some good things from our friends from Magic Mind later. And don't forget to check out the episode description for our exclusive discount code, which I will explain a little later. But good things are ahead. So let's talk about let's talk. Let's answer some big questions. So my first question for today involves a video, actually. A viral video came up on TikTok during this week. Really thought it'd be for tomorrow's tweet cap, but I I watched it, and I was like, I can use it for this. So we're going to watch the video first, then I'll ask the first question. So let us check this out. All right, let me make sure I have this as well. This is a TikToker named Kiss the Crack. So Kiss the Crack, <laughs> let's hear what he has to say. All right, here we go. I must be like really Yo. apparently I must be like really fucking ugly. Cause why did I just go meet up with somebody to go somewhere to eat? Yo G- Apparently I must be like really fucking ugly. Because why did I just go meet up with somebody to go somewhere to eat? And they get out of their car and they're supposed to come in my car and we go there. And they're like, oh, I think we can go to another spot. And I'm like, okay, I can, like, you will just go in my car, right? And they're like, oh, no. I like, just follow me. I'll, we'll go, I'll follow, take you there. And, like, tell me why the fuck they get in their car and go off. And I, like, try to catch up to them, right? And, like, they start, like, speeding up. And I, like, kind of lose them. And then I look on my phone and I'm blocked. Like, I can't send them any more messages. Says no longer able to send messages. Like, am I really, do I look like that bad? (sighs) All right. So we saw that there. And I definitely feel this guy's pain. And my question might be, my question off the bat from this is how do you go about dating people? Sorry. My question about this is how do you go about dating shallow people in the world we live in today? Just like that. I know this guy kissed the crack. is not the only one who's had these type of stories. No matter if you are a he, she, or they, no matter if you are straight or part of the LGBTQI plus community, in 2024, with dating app cultures and high expectations and options, a lot of people don't know how to handle these interactions. And I'm the one in, uh, you know, Ryan and Cara have uh, special partners. Ryan's married. Cara's a long-term serious relationship. I'm the I'm single right now, and I've definitely had these experience. And I'll admit, in the most embarrassing moment of probably my life, this very thing happened to me four years ago. Right. And it sucked. I remember it's the day that Biden was officially announced as the winner that Friday. And, um, you know, I haven't really been with the exception of one instance of a special, meaningful relationship dating out in this world um, in my late 20s, while also trying to hold my a career together while having this podcast off the ground. 
I understand this world is everybody's busy and a lot of people don't know how to treat each other in this dating world. And you know what? And I will also say there, there are a few people in this world who could probably say this guy's contradicting himself because he's also been shallow in the dating world. And that is definitely true. I can't deny that. I feel <laughs> I've learned from my lessons. Don't treat the world that way anymore for years. And it sucks to make somebody feel that low. And then it sucks when that happens to you. And I wish there was a easy answer to figuring out how to date in this shallow world. There really isn't. And I know the broad answer, the, 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 the easy answer really is to really work on yourself, on your life, on your career, focus on the people who love you and interacting. That really is the way to conquer this. And then somebody hopefully worthy enough will come into your life, make it easier for them to make it easier for you as the for you to be their partner and them to be your partner. You two make it easy for each other with no games being played and getting that trust off the bat. And unfortunately, it was not unfortunately, but in this world, some people find love sooner than others this is what it is and again doesn't matter if you're straight a part of the lgbtqi plus community and i know it's i know it's hard to it's hard to be honest it's not it's not at the same time so i know it's easy to just work on yourself on paper but amongst that and just seeing other people in you know expressing their love too do support it but it's you're not it's not out of the ordinary just to feel like you know maybe it's it's my time or when will it be my time but i wish it was that easy in this life this dating world but when you see stories like this you are just genuinely disgusted and i really really hope that this guy finds somebody worthy to make sure he doesn't feel that low again i feel for him so that's what i have to say for now um Carl and ryan why don't you continue the conversation Yes, we, we do hope that someone will kiss, kiss the crack someday. Um, I'll be honest, this is to, not, not to the people who have had this happen to them. I'm, I won't touch that first, but to the people who have done this, this is too much work. You got your full on Lightning McQueen somebody out here, drive away <laughs> as fast as you can. What are you doing? A, a simple text saying, not coming, sorry, works so much better. You don't even have to block them necessarily, but if you want to, you can do that too. Send a text, say, Listen, it's not going to work out. I'm going to block you because I don't want you to like follow up. Like, you could you could do that without showing up. I mean, I guess obviously, like he says, like is he that ugly? Like, there must be. There, there had to be like some like he if it was appearance based and not like they met him and the the vibes were off. Uh, like if they saw him and he just looked totally, they looked like totally different from his photos. Uh, it, I, I don't know. It was uh the guy in the video is he gay or straight like do we know if he's seeing a woman or not they didn't say i don't yeah. think that was established okay because if, if it's a woman i know women who have said that uh they get an off feeling from a dude very quickly if they think there's something off with him um i mean that dude seemed fine to me but you know you never know if you get the feeling but either well, way you can just use your words and say so sorry. also <laughs> it sounds like the plan was for her to get in his car and so like I understand if you meet a person, you don't want to get in their car, right? But, like, don't make that the plan. Yeah, that's like, the also, thing there. Safe, like, also, that's just a safety. For, this is for everybody. I mean, listen, <laughs> you, Matt said this happened to him. And he you know, talked, you know, obviously from the soul about a similar situation, right? And that's totally fine, but... I do want to make clear, it wasn't our plan to go and show this cars. It was always... To follow to oh, Adam Park just, and follow well, to see, this that's place. that's horrible, because... Uh, that it was... They just, yeah, yeah anyway, they... Like, even Matt, but even if you are going on a date with, with you know, Matt, right? Like, who I know is a great guy. Don't get in his car. You just met him. What are you doing? Yeah. Don't get in anyone's car if you just met them. So I'm okay with her not wanting to get in this guy's car. But, like, why was that ever the plan? Like, right. I, uh, I went on a first date. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, know, I went on a first date with a guy when I was in university. And uh, I get in his car. There's, like, no interior in there. And he's like, yeah, I, uh, I like 
I'm like trying to turn it to like a race car. And then he brought me to the highway and was speeding like 220 in and out between cars. I felt like I was going to like shit my pants. I kept asking him to slow down. He thought it was, he was funny. He was having a great time. Never did that again. Did he ever again. become a race car driver? Uh, I don't know. I did not talk to him after that. It was Kyle it was Bush. Lightning, lightning McQueen. <laughs> it was Lightning McQueen. Uh, <laughs> I love how that's the only race car driver we all know. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but no Brian, seriousness. the true NASCAR fan. Yeah, but in all seriousness, like, yeah, you can't. That's wrong. Like, and I get it. Don't go on a date with someone out of pity. If you show up and you really do think someone's going to harm you, then you can't. Just say you're uncomfortable. And yeah, but yeah, you should be like, listen. Or, like, again, you can go to a public place. Like, certainly don't change locations. Like, don't be like, oh, we're going to change locations. Be like, let's grab a coffee. Like, you know, get out of there quick. Don't get in a car with them. I agree with that. But I don't know. It just feels like that. I don't know. And I'm, weird, I'm not but... a woman. So, like, Kara, have you ever gotten a vibe from someone? You're like, I can't be near this guy. This is dangerous. Um, not dangerous per se, but, uh, within like a few minutes of knowing them, I knew it wasn't going to work out, mm -hmm. but then it's never been so bad where I'm immediately just looking for a way out of the situation and said, I'm just like, I'll just go through with this date. Right. You know? And just be yeah. done from there. Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously if you are, if you are a woman or a man, it doesn't really matter to me, uh, who has had that feeling of like actual fear, I'm talking actual fear. Of you're like I need to get out of this situation. Like, definitely message us. Like I, at T Tweet Cap, productive conversations on all platforms. Like, I want to hear these stories because I can't. I mean, it, part of it's probably like my, my guy brain, right? I, I, I Matt said I'm a dude. I'm also married, so like I'm way, way out of this pool, right? Like I'm, you know, s several years out of this pool, but I can't even fathom how scared you'd have to be to actually make the decision to speed away from a person that you just met like get in your car and drive as fast as you can mm -hmm. away from them like yeah. if you just say it out loud it is a ridiculous thing to have happen like yeah and not even and just for the person who had it happen like imagine you're that you know you're that person you go to your friend's house later that night like oh my god i literally drove away from a date like it sounds no matter what side of it you're on it sounds ridiculous to admit that it ever happened and so I want to know, like, what? Yeah, I, feel I mean, like we've heard guy perspective, right? But what is the what is the perspective of the driver? I shouldn't even say guys. Like, what is the driver's perspective in that scenario? Because I can't I even like fathom it. The only circumstances are they felt uncomfortable upon meeting and were like felt unsafe. But right. I feel like this is not likely. Like, not that it doesn't happen, but it's just the less likely scenario. I think the more likely is maybe their photos just didn't look like what they looked like in real life, and they wanted to look for a way to get out of it, but they didn't want to be confrontational, so they did it in the goofiest, no, no, most no. This round. Is, this is way worse than being confrontational. I'm going to say that. For the folks who are, I mean, there's going to be plenty of people who probably get mad because, like, safety or whatever, but, like, if you're, if it's not safety, and you don't have to admit that, but, like, you know, if, if, in your, if you've done this, you know if you did it because you felt unsafe or because you didn't like the person. Yeah, and, and we definitely make want to make sure everybody wants to feel safe and comfortable. Yeah. But and I'm talking I, to the other people. Yeah, and like in terms of feeling uncomfortable and feeling just uninterested, there should be some line there, don't you think? Right, yeah. Uncomfortable and uninterested are different. Yeah. And yeah. so if you were just uninterested, right. this is way, way, way worse than <laughs> just saying, I'm not interested. No, like, but yeah, I mean, I mean like when worse. I say not confrontational, like they just, they, they don't want to make it awkward, awkward to say right. the words. And so they just like, no. ran away yeah and, uh, so imagine if you weren't in a car like imagine if you saw a person <laughs> and then you just literally ran away yeah just that's what run. you're essentially doing like, not, like <laughs> i know you added a little story and whatever like in this case of this video and you tried to play it cool like oh i lost you and then but then you blocked them so obviously everybody knows <laughs> but like imagine that right. you didn't have your car that's the equivalent of this is that you saw a person you said oh and then just ran in the other direction as fast as you could. Like, there's no positive way for the person on the other end to take that. So unless you believe that person is, like, again, dangerous, don't do that to somebody. Just be right. like, this is not going to – Even Honestly, even being, like, walking up and being like, listen, no offense, you don't look anything like your pictures. I'm not <laughs> <Goodbye>. interested. <laughs> I mean, they might call you a name. 
I'm not, I won't, I'm not going to sit here and say every guy, cause I know guys and I've called a lot of guys, a lot of very mean things on this show. Uh, based on <laughs> trivial things so i know for a fact there will be guys who will call you all all manner of me names and Kara, i think will probably agree with me oh uh, i love to I do know, that and matt will probably agree with me like people will be mean to you if you say being if you say i'm not interested but i do think that's still better again it, it definitely let us know if we're off off the mark here but i think we're not like i think that's yeah. still better the um, uh the hidden uh hidden the hidden third uh scenario is uh they just were a memer they were a shit poster and they uh, uh they met this guy online they said this guy i can mess with this guy <laughs> it was for their own amusement to drive yeah. like i mean yeah and don't do and that are, they, there are and there are people out there too that's that's the thing like to, to really so the the other side of this conversation when you were on the other thing and this guy i really don't think our friend kissed the crack he doesn't seem like a bad person. His it, name is work. But. True. <laughs> I'm this millionaire. That's true. That's true. That's true. Actually, I didn't even think of that. You're right. But Fair this enough. guy, whatever he is, he seems like an innocent person. And when you do something like that, or you cancel before you meet somebody, like you do feel like there is something wrong with you. What what else is there? Especially if you're not gonna be honest. Um you know, one thing, especially with the dating app culture and now trying to understand like the real realities of it. Like one thing I do almost every time now is FaceTime. That's my thing. Right. I will always FaceTime before I meet before to avoid that awkward. You weren't what I expected or maybe they didn't see you from me. Yeah. And they also just the other side to make this that at least have happened to me and other people. I'm speaking with my perspective is. With the online part, you meet somebody before you before you meet in person. And then you have people who do, they flirt with you. They make plans. They initiate these signs of interest. And then when they just change their mind, you um, you feel some type of way. You don't understand what did you did, do wrong. Like really deep down when I really think how to do the dating apps, I'm not trying to blame the apps because at the end of the day, it's the person behind the app that makes these decisions ultimately. They're just another step in this pool of the shallow people. And you should probably, once you match with them, honestly meet them within 24 hours, don't say too much. Maybe, a, a, not maybe, definitely do a quick FaceTime to say, hey, I'm real. So what I look like, hey, how are you doing? A quick five to 10 minutes, that's all you need. Hey, do you still want to meet up? And you say yes or no, and then you go from there. Um, it's tough. The, the really the only advice I could give you, you just have to go in with the with people you meet with a fresh slate with a fresh slate, and be ready for them to to honestly disappoint you, but also be ready you could be pleasantly surprised. And for me, in my experience, the best times in my most serious relationships. It was just as easy as possible. There was no doubts. There was no overthinking. There was nothing to worry. This person made it easy for me to know their interests, and I reciprocated back. And I've definitely learned that doesn't happen a lot. But when it does, say, make sure you're ready. Um, I will say, before we move on, because you've, you've talked about the, the shallow before, like shallow people. And I would just, I don't want to push back because, I mean, obviously, if someone sees your face, it drives away as fast as they can. That's they're pretty <laughs> shallow, more than likely. Yeah. But so I'm not, I won't even argue that point. But I do think that it's less about like the dating pool being shallow entirely. But like, okay, so think of like an actual swimming pool. We're talking about the dating pool. Think of it as an actual swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Where are the stairs in every single swimming pool you've ever been in? They're in the shallow end. And then as you get deep, like further in, you get to the deep water. If you just jump straight into the deep end, like, and I'll, I'll just be honest with you, like as a married person, if you tried to jump straight into the deep end, and I have done that before, like you're more likely to drown, frankly. You know what I mean? Like that's hard to just jump in, meet someone, have an instant connection that like is forever or whatever, a long time, whatever you're looking for. Like that's not like, that's always going to come with extra risk. But 
the way that comes with the least amount of risk is you come in through the shallow end and you have to deal with that. But you you take it as it comes, like you said, be prepared to just know what's happening. And then eventually you'll get there and you'll get to like you'll you'll find that group of people that you're actually interested in, if that makes sense. And, and then actually like you'll that. find those people too. But yeah, you, but I'm saying you'll find those people who everyone right. like everyone's looking for somebody for real. And you, you'll get through the shallow. I, I, I don't I think it's less about like you have to be on guard because there's shallow people everywhere and you have to just fight them off until like the right person comes <laughs> around. I think it's less hostile than that. I think you, you have to just kind of proactively move forward. I'm more uh, so I feel like a lot of it just is luck. Like I had shit well, relationships. Luck, yeah. yeah, I, I had yeah. shit relationships my whole life and then I got out of like my recent one for my current boyfriend and I was like I'm just casually dating for a little while like I don't want to like I don't want to jump right into anything he was the second person I went on a date with uh we got together within a week moved in together the next month and we are definitely getting married one day (laughs) so I feel like it's just meeting the right person at the right time a lot of times and that just really comes down to luck I agree yeah, with I that, think, too. But it's yeah. also just figuring out for the people. And this segment is really for those people who still amongst that advice, which is definitely true. How do you still go about trying to date when all these different factors are out there? Yeah, like, I, just I try your best and keep in mind yeah, that I was you say. can only do your best. There's nothing that you can really do to push it faster than it's going to come in your direction. Right. Yeah. For, for those then, folks, that's what I would say, too. It's very it's. It, I mean, it's not like the best. I wish, obviously, everyone wants like the the hack, right? Like this will do it, <laughs> but I don't think it exists, and I don't think it's ever existed. And so, even without dating, like online, I think online has definitely made things harder. But like, even without the apps, it's never existed where like you're gonna bat a thousand every time. So you just kind of have to know that that's gonna happen, and keep basically keep your eye on like the you know keep your eye on your goal, whatever and whatever that goal is. If your goal isn't to find you know a partner forever then obviously that's fine too uh but for the folks who it is like you just have to understand that it might feel like everybody else is finding that person but they're probably not like a lot of people are doing this they're doing it maybe differently but a lot of people are going through a a version of this uh and even like people like me who weren't on the apps there was still a version of this like it, it was different sure I think it was better personally, given what I know from like this show, but it wasn't like, oh, I, I didn't go on the apps. And so I was able to just like look around, you know, scope the room and say, ah, oh, there we are. Like, that's not how it works. You know what I mean? So I would yeah. just say perseverance. Yeah, this is a good word. <laughs> and then if anything, you this is your time. If you're a guy or girl, you get really, really good looking and it gets easier in that way. But understand. The oh, but does it? I, would, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Necessarily get easier. I, I think I, I, you end up with you, more you have, of the shallow people. You have yeah. a wider pool, though. I think right. is the only reason it gets maybe a little bit simpler. Is if like you're attractive, then you know your range is kind of extended for what you can look for. Yeah, but so many more of those people. Now. I mean, listen, I'm not at all against people getting attractive because you know how how funny and clever I had to be to find. You know what I mean? Like it is easy to be that. attractive. Cause I, yeah, you could, I mean, you could work on that, but like, I like comedy? to think that's natural talent, man. I like to think we can right. save some of it for us short guys. Um, and <laughs> you so can get a lot of money. That'll help too. <laughs> That'll help too. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I do think that you do with those, with that one too, you run the risk of getting more of those shallow people. You know what I mean? You do run that True. risk, but you also do, you know, you get more shots on goal, right? As they say. So you're more likely to score if you have more shots on goal. So if more people yeah, are interested, and, and you're more likely to find someone that matches with you. Yeah, and I mean, just because you're attractive, it's not like you're going to end up in a better relationship. Like, the most no. beautiful women in the world have been cheated on by subpar-looking guys, mm-hmm. and vice versa. Maybe not this commonly, but, you Tom know. Tom Brady. Poor, poor Tom. We go. talked about him on the show. There you go. I think it is... I think this has um, exactly where we're supposed to be in this convo. And you just, the only hack you can do is work on yourself. And then one day it just pops up and be ready and be respectful. And just know that it's going to be okay. And there's a plenty <laughs> of people who love you for you. It will definitely be okay. Yeah. And until then, Let's rock and roll. All right. So in uh related in related things, 
one question I do have, and this is relating to this is specifically relating to. It could be both dating. It could just be other p. Is both dating and friendships. You could do this. My question here is: um, Is ghosting okay? Is it okay to see a message that somebody is asking you? Whether it's dating, making plans, or friend hanging out with friends, and it is okay to just not answer them. I know this could really be broken down in different tiers. Um, but when I first asked that question, is ghosting okay? How would Carl and Ryan answer that first? I think the only time there's an excuse for it is if, uh, um, the person messaging you or contacting you is unsafe or the communication is unsafe for you in some kind of way. But otherwise I don't really see any reason why you can't just tell them you don't want to be in contact anymore. I suppose if the options are ghosting or hitting the Lightning McQueen, as we just talked about, <laughs> then ghosting is the preferable option of the two because at least they don't have to get in their car, see you drive away from them at full speed. Um, but I would say, like, so my thing with the ghosting, right? Like, ghosting can happen at a few different spots. Like you said, Matt, it's hard to be like, is ghosting bad? But, like, if let's say you do say, like, no to somebody, right? Or, like, I'm just not interested. And that person keeps trying to talk to you. Like, don't feel obligated to message that person just because they messaged you. And, yes, I would say that's technically, like, that person will say you ghosted them for sure. But yeah, if you're not interested and you've kind of made it clear that you're not interested. Right. You you don't, like, you don't owe them that. But, like, yeah. if someone's, like, you want to go on a date, like, first question, like, or you want to <laughs> meet for coffee, they wouldn't say why well, I'm going to want to be for coffee or let's get drinks whatever first question right you can't stop there <laughs> like you can't just be like you can't say nothing i feel like you have to say no but like yeah oh not or even if you're like listen i'm not sure yet like i'm not sure right now something like that like you don't have to be like no not with you ew like you could be nice about it be like or, or even genuine like you're not ready to date right now and you're like ah, i'm not really you know not really into that right now just kind of talking to people and then if that person keeps being like well, what about now? What about now? Or how about this? Like then, yeah, don't message them. Like, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Ghost them at that point. Uh, but if if you say like if they just ask an instant question on a dating app, would you like like it's a dating app? If someone asks you, would you like to go on a date on a dating app? I do believe you have to respond to that. It doesn't have to be a positive. You don't have to go on the date. You could be like, I'm not interested in that. You could say I'm not interested in you if you really want to be kind of you know forward about it. But you have to say something. And at that point then ghosting to me is totally okay. Like if someone is not catching the hint yeah, that you're not interested in him or her, then like definitely just be like, all right, listen, no, don't, don't say this, but be like, all right, in your head, like I can move on. I, I've said that I'm not going on a date with this person. I said it clearly in writing and they keep messaging me. I'm done messaging them. And then yeah. eventually they'll tire themselves out and go away. Um, But also like if you do go on a date, then it gets like, then it gets. That's when it gets tricky. I would say, Matt, right? And yeah. Car, I think you probably agree because, like, on the one hand, you've gone on a date with somebody, so like, I feel you. It feels almost like you have to then give them like the courtesy of saying, "I'm not interested," right? Yeah. But on the other hand, like, what if the date, like, was I want to say it was just bad? Yeah. Like, I, like, what if the person was like kind of on the date you're like i don't know that i like this person uh, like, like i went uh i had a, a date with a guy this, i said I, I dated to or the my current boyfriend was the second mm -hmm. person i met first person i met uh we went on a hike um i'm fine with people whose political differences are slightly off from mine so like right. he he could he was open to discussing things with me like we were having a like friendly debate and mm -hmm. it was going fine we get to my place i cook us dinner we're eating and then we start talking about something we don't really agree on again. It wasn't even like something super controversial. Mm -hmm. And he started like laughing in my face. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, I felt like my blood boiling. So when he left the house, I just blocked him on everything. I, <laughs> I didn't want to deal with it. I like you can't laugh in somebody's face and expect something to continue right. after that. As I mean, like, so I would say after the date, 
that's when it's like the most after the first date that's when it's like the most kind of iffy on what the right thing to do is if you go on two dates with someone in my opinion at that point say like, what up then you have to you have to if you're done after that be like listen i've tried this a few times mm-hmm. when i feel like you got to tell them like, oh, this- like yeah. at that point be like listen um, we've done this a few times i'm not feeling it i'm sorry there's a uh, one guy that both me and my friend had to ghost. He has a uh, a wife and a kid, uh, and he was nonstop following us on all our social media. He was calling us on Discord at like four a.m., like right. sending us random nudes that we wouldn't see for weeks because we wouldn't go through our messages. And we both told him leave us alone, and he would make backup accounts and stuff like that. That's, yeah, yeah, that's those that's people ghostable. who are, are criminal. Well, yeah, but you also said leave me crypt- alone too. Yeah, yeah. we yeah, yeah we told him to leave us alone. He didn't. Kept messaging us, so we just blocked him 100%. every time he showed up. Yeah, the criminal yeah. behavior. That's there to <laughs> yeah. ghost. Yeah, and if you've said no at any point, either beginning, middle, end, like if you said I'm not interested anymore, at that point you owe that person nothing, right? Yeah. Like from that point on, you owe them nothing. But before then, if you haven't said no. I feel like it's, it's not even really that you insane. owe them anything. It's just treating them as a human being. Right. With respect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I feel like in terms of ghosting, if you see the person, I think the the reasons to ghost dwindle. If you like actually see right. them, if you right. don't see them, you never met them. There's a better reason to do it. But especially if you, if you're talking for weeks or months yeah. And you just disappear, that's fine. If it's in the first couple of days, sure. I think it's fine to yeah. let it go. Where if you, you went didn't... like, hey, hey, what's up? And like it didn't get further than that, <laughs> yeah. then that's fine. I mean, yes, right. that's technically ghosting, but you were not in a deep connection with this person. This is a stranger right. you met on the street, essentially. Exactly. If you have any that. form of connection, even a short one, it's fair to establish that where this is going. Yeah. But again, if you just prolong or if you make plans or you make even especially the make plans part like Boy, that's horrible you just don't pick a time at date say check in why don't we you want to go this weekend if you don't want to make a plan on friday on monday for a friday where we're naturally don't want to do things on a calendar that again fixes those type of things mm-hmm. don't make those plans so long where it's almost naturally, we, we just don't, we see something on a calendar, we just don't want to do it, even if I it's important. That's true. Yeah. Like, I remember hearing Jimmy Kimmel say, to prove this point, for a whole year when he was doing radio, he was going to staple a piece of bologna on, <laughs> on a billboard, and he says, in one year from now, I will eat this bologna. And even that came, and he still didn't want to do it. Well, I mean, in fairness, that's also gross because it's baloney that's been outside. But true, <laughs> I know maybe a tough example that says, but it's just the idea of like making plans and committing is just too much for people. Some people don't like to commit. I agree. Yeah, that's where again, where I talk about if you really meet someone, you have to meet them within forty eight hours, if if anything. I'm not, and like that's well, that's it, when you have it the is momentum. what it is. That's right? when you have momentum. That's when both people are clearly yeah. interested. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Exactly. I don't think you have to. I don't think it's a steadfast rules, all that. But like true. everyone is involved. Like at that point, yeah. Within 48 hours after meeting someone and having a good conversation, everyone involved is probably pretty excited about it. Right. Whereas like if you wait like a week after that, it gives people time to meet someone else or cool off or whatever. And then they're not yeah. interested anymore. So which also fine. But like I do see what you're saying. Like usually within the first 48 hours, you have like momentum. You're like, all oh, right. Like I really like this person. I think this person's really cool. And you can kind of like see how the date might go in your mind because you're thinking about it. So I do think that's there's something to that, Matt. I agree. Indeed. So some of the things to truly consider there. And um yeah. Don't ghost. If you really don't get interested, don't make more of the conversation if you're not <laughs> interested in the vet. Just say what's going on. It's not going to hurt. All right. Another question I have. Is unfollowing that serious? You know, looking back and also seeing how media sometimes portray this with celebrities and athletes, Mm -hmm. I think unfollowing is a pretty serious thing now. You are saying, I am not interested in anything you do. I mean, if you, of course, if you're just some 
this is more interpersonal relationships. Like if you unfollow mm-hmm. a celebrity or athlete, they won't even notice. Um, it's just if they're <laughs> famous. But like if you are a friend, an ex, lover, somebody else, unfollowing, I do think uh, makes a stance and it says what's going on. And I definitely told the story of unfollowing got me in a weird situation. Definitely talked about it. I don't know if I've done the air. Have I? I don't think you have. But Interesting. Um, doesn't mean I'll you just, have to. I just don't think you have. You probably should send it, but I'll send, I'll say it. I'll say I'll say it because to be fair to the audience, and I'll leave them hanging. I'll tell a hmm. another personal story with that one, but um, uh, but Ryan and Carl, before I get into how unfollowing can actually be serious, um, what do you two think? Um, I I don't really know. I don't think I have much an opinion on it because uh, I've never really paid attention to it, even though I'm like chronically online with like. My personal life and stuff, I guess. I uh, I don't actually use social media very much outside of posting whatever I make. So I don't I really... I say, <laughs> Cara, for like, in your case, so obviously, like, we're talking about like big celebrities, think LeBron James or whatever. If you unfollow LeBron James, like, that doesn't matter, right? <laughs> but, uh, and not... Not that you're not a big celebrity, but I have a little. I got a little <laughs> cult following. Right. So, like, do I you like? I, I mean, have people ever unfollowed you? Like, have people that follow um, you ever been like, "I'm out"? Uh, I have a big enough following that it would not really make sense it for them register, to register. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, there's been one occasion where I noticed, like, one of my regulars who had been in my Discord server since day one. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I had a smaller discord server with only like a hundred to 200 people in there. And like, we all knew each other and talked a lot. And then that yeah. server got r- deleted and, uh, they're all known as like my OGs. They call themselves <laughs> my OGs, stuff like that. And one of them I noticed was just gone and he wasn't my friend on discord anymore. And he didn't follow me anywhere. And I was, uh, was a little hurt. And then I found out it was because him and his wife had had a baby and he was just super busy. So you know, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> yeah, but it did hurt, right? Like, oh, when I was, you first saw I think it. I was more so uh, concerned at first. Uh, actually. Okay. Well, that's true, because you had built a, like an actual kind of relationship where you knew yeah. this person. I don't know. I think it would hurt. Um, I, I do. I, I do, too. Following like that. So I, I can't Not speak yet. too much to it. Yeah, at the moment. Um, But I do think that it would be a little bit like I do think it does hurt. Now, you say, is it serious? Serious and hurt, I feel like are different to me. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't mm-hmm. think it's serious, but I, yeah. I, I can't see it being hurtful. Yeah, at the end of the day, like someone doesn't like you, like a bunch of people don't like me. You know what I mean? Um, it, it happens, and so yeah, it's not that serious, but I think it does hurt. Like I, I, I again, I can't speak from too much personal experience. I've never that i've never that i've noticed been unfollowed and that means if i have been unfollowed <laughs> even with my abysmal follower count it's because i just truly and this is just an all-around truth of mine i don't like pay that much attention to followers like if people follow me like because they read something that i wrote i usually just follow them back and then like that's the end of it and i never think about it ever again um so yeah, if like one of those people like stopped following because they didn't like something I wrote about, you know, AEW or whatever, which has mm-hmm. happened, then I I wouldn't even notice to be honest with you. And then I, I'm gonna end up following someone who doesn't like me, which is also pretty funny. because uh, I do I genuinely do follow back. I don't like I know ratios used to be a big thing, right? Like you want way more followers than followees. I don't I would be fine with equilibrium. I'll follow back everybody. I see doesn't celebrities just do that me. now for cause they look at it. A lot of argue when you're a celebrity account, it's more for branding than actual the social media part. Yeah, I even saw Taylor Swift; she unfollowed everybody, so we can which look like so zero weird. followers like, to fifty million. Yeah, which yeah. is so weird. Like, I don't get that. Why <laughs> just follow people? What does it do? like? What does it do to you? Like, you don't even you're too look good at to, that. to follow people. But you don't, like that's so Taylor Swift. Like, you don't even look. That's not even your real page. You know, if she's got an actual like algorithm that it's yeah under like a ridiculous name that no one will ever find like you know 
right. Chiefs, you know, Chiefs something 42 or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And on like NFL Twitter, she's just gassing people probably. Uh, so like, just who cares? Like what your algorithm looks like because you followed a bunch of people that are fans of yours. Just ha- the, the social media intern has to go online and do a little extra work. They have to like look things up now to find what's trending. We do it twice a week. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? It's not that hard to find out what's trending to have, you know, so I don't know. You have to go to the actual newspaper or something. <laughs> no, yeah, you could, you could even do that. We've, I won't, you know, pull back the curtain. We've done that. We're like, oh, we, we need like one more story. We'll see like actual news sites, what people are talking about. We're like, oh, that's a kind of a fun one. And we'll cover right. that. Like, so yeah, like, I don't know. I think if you have, a, if you're a celebrity like that, you should follow all of your fans. That's my opinion. If you have a following. Right. Like you should try. I mean, unless you got a creepy one, uh, always. I, uh, like, I feel like that should be the theme of this episode. Unless someone's creepy, I'm very picky with my nice uh, like them. TikTok page. I never scroll Instagram like ever, mm-hmm. so I only follow 69 people just so it can be the sex number. But then on TikTok, <laughs> on TikTok, I'm very picky because I only like to follow people that I actually find like funny. So right. I just follow like meme pages and like really creepy weird people. Yeah, and well, that's, that's like my yeah. thing too. I uh, not the creepy weird people following, <laughs> but um, I follow people now that I genuinely care about. Oh yeah, I I do thing. also follow like my old high school and uni friends stuff. Like yeah, that. that basically, if I if I follow you, there's likely a good chance I legitimately respect you as well. And you know, at a time, I love this. I this did... is three different three different ways of doing this. Because if I follow you, it means you followed me. <laughs> i mean unless you're like a celebrity i like or like or you know what i mean like yeah obviously that's different like if i'm following you know like you know and it's whatever. a little different now when i follow cody Rhodes, i'm not expecting a follow back although cody if you're listening someday do follow back uh but like yeah in general if you're not one of those people if i follow you it's just genuinely because you liked and followed me sometimes it's not even sometimes i'll just notice like if you like three of my things in a row like three of my bows in a row i'll just throw you a like uh <laughs> Yeah, it's just if you if you're nice to me, I'll follow you. I I've done. I'm not a particular. I'm not. I'm <laughs> willy nilly with this thing. I don't care. I'll follow everybody. Yeah, with the following, right? And I'll I'll explain my story. It's unique, but um, especially when you when you get in real close relationships and the unfollowing, it really can. Uh, I think it matter. It, I think it. Well, it's. I think it hurts more when you have like if this person has a special relationship with you mm-hmm. and I'll just explain the story. Right. Um, so my second to last um, girl, I legitimately dated, right. Um, dated for like six months and then whatever for the next uh, eight months after that. Right. Or as other way, dated for eight months and the rest of time, knowing in the year and a half, whatever it was. Right. And long story short, it's the end um, I can't, I I came to the conclusion. I just, we can't even be friends. It's time to move on. Are we still friends? That Tyler song, that's, it just, it's time to move on for what the relationship arc was. If you know what mm-hmm. I mean, the arc of the relationship created is like, we can't do this anymore, right? And so I didn't follow. I thought the best way was the last regular combo we had. It was a peaceful one. I was like, the way of our relationship was going, there's no reason to stay in touch anymore. It's time to walk into the sunset after our last, like, real positive convo and knowing there's really no future here, right? Mm-hmm. Does that make you? Does that make sense? Because that's yeah. that's the important I'm part of the story. Yeah. So, I on I pro, if I did this back, I would I would mute. But I unfollowed, mm-hmm. put me at peace. Like, it's time to go, and then thirty minutes later. Why are you a suggested follower? And then that led to a three hour phone conversation. And then, um, it, then they that really you was. About this? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty bad. <laughs> that's, well, this that's is sus behavior from the other individual. Man. Yeah. So it's basically this is my, this is an ex. And then, like, I really liked you. You decided not to go to the next level. I thought we could stay friends, but. Stayed friends with like the most grueling eight months. And this is hardcore pandemic time too, right? Mm-hmm. So you didn't know what was going on. Like that's the one thing that's that's funny about the pandemic for the rest of my life. The, the end of my relationship, my last legit relationship, 
um um in the pandemic right yeah. so i was like okay we can't be friends it's not gonna work uh, um uh it's not gonna work because you're moving on i can't be please i'm not saying this to be a, i really i just don't know another way to explain this mm-hmm. so please i'm not trying to upset anyone when i say this i didn't want to be the gay best friend because that's how i was being treated at that point despite former dating right you were kind of in a friend zone you were just hearing about all these stories from okay I get what you're yeah saying. like you telling me this stuff you do this stuff you show up with hickeys on your neck for somebody yeah. who used to be to date you and you used to really care about you and really liked you so yeah it's a lot i can't you're you're really you're, you're you're doing too much to me i can't i can't go like this i have to I have to remove you because this isn't going to work. And um, I thought our last pu- peaceful, and it's not like, by the way, we had, I told you about the three hour conversation. That was the third time that this type of combo happened in that, yeah. that week span. Like, it's just, it's too damn complicated. I mean, yeah, they should not have called like, like we said, yeah, that's like, really it, weird. is it hurtful <laughs> to see? Sure. It is not serious enough to call someone and have a three hour conversation. It, yeah, it is uh, a lot more serious to uh, do that in response. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you know, yeah probably... that's way worse than unfollowing. Calling someone, being like, "Why did you unfollow me?" Like, that's, that's weird way worse. And this is three by this is three years. Uh, this has been a few years now. I probably would have handled the conversation a little bit more blunt, a little mm-hmm. bit better at explaining why this isn't working. I don't understand. For 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 the special times we had, and it's it's not gonna just go away when I'm seeing you with somebody else. And I'm not at I'm not upset that you've moved on either. I'm not you saying just that. Don't want to be part of it. Yeah, exactly. So I don't understand how you couldn't comprehend that that was hard for me, yeah, and that's people... why I understand stand more about the friend zone. And you just like it's not you, it's them. How I just. Other people somehow some other people could do it. God bless them. I saw that that soccer player Neymar. He actually she went to his ex's wedding. Like I mean, that's fine. Some people are like, very you good can do that. Yeah, for sure. Do. I just don't have that fortunate part. Mm-hmm. I'm really I'm really cool with people I've dated briefly for some reason, but the yeah. long term dated the um doesn't work. So um that's where the unfollow. And maybe they were confused too. I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe it'd be so much easier if you, if we knew. But it is what it is, <laughs> right? And um, I still have a lot of respect and admiration for this person, wherever the heck they are. Um, but we just had to. <laughs> that Bless chapter you. ended, and we had to move on. And maybe as we got an older, we would have understood it a little better. But um. From there, I learned maybe un- unfollowing can really it clearly affects people various ways, and it can hurt more than you think. Yeah, but don't respond. Yeah. People listen, don't <laughs> respond that way. Like that's that that should be an outlier response, not a norm. Like you can be upset someone unfollowed you without calling Doing that. Them. Yeah, like that's yeah. Crazy. I don't know. Maybe it was just like, <laughs> did they care more? You know, this it's would be a good know, t- this would be a good time, time to say that. Maybe there, maybe we really there's this would be a good time to really evaluate what's going on in this situation. But yeah. only thing I can say is it was the pandemic, right? Like, like post pandemic. Like, so people, were... this was February 2021. Okay, but so like coming off the heels of the pandemic, like right. immediate after, and so like I feel like a lot of people still felt really lonely. Could be, yeah. And so maybe like you, you feel lonely anyway, and then someone that you've been close to the entire time is no longer in your, uh, in your life or whatever. And that's why and you so... hang out with the person, the new person. I don't have. No, I, I know. I'm just saying. Like, I'm just, I that's see me how... being petty. Sorry. No, but you're saying, right. I could see how your COVID, like COVID brains, could take that yeah. and be like, God, I've lost. I've had so few people that I've hung out with because the world has been closed for the last however long. I could see something like that maybe, but still, yeah. I'm, I'm with Kara. Don't. Don't yeah, that's that. really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's but... like that's like like calling somebody and getting upset that you've seen them online but they haven't liked your new profile picture or something. Oh, don't definitely don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I will say though, 
one thing I will say to put a bow on this, and then we'll move on from that experience, which um you had to go through. And there were hints that that was still on my mind for a little bit, even as early as a astrology episode, right? <laughs> um, but I'll admit right here that I've been uh, going to therapy since March. And after going with my sessions with my amazing therapist, I really learned that hearing it from her. And I told the exact story, like I, I put a lot of blame on myself for having that happen. And then when I heard her and really hearing, like I'm pretty good at giving the bullet points, what's going on. So I couldn't be as more honest as I needed to. And she said, basically like, it's not your fault. Um, and that really meant a lot. And I really understood that. I don't know if you've seen Goodwill Hunting. It's not your fault. I was just thinking of that. Yeah. <laughs> like I literally had that in the most serious moment, but um, she really said that. And some people don't realize how they affect others subconsciously. So, and you're to... the way the way people react to things that you do that are not like really harmful in a big sense. It's not your fault. Their reaction isn't your fault. Right, right. Exactly. Like I have this is isn't to the same degree, but like I have misophonia. I don't know if you guys know what that is. I have like I don't know. It's um like a mental disorder where I have like severe issues with some sounds. Uh oh. so like I mm -hmm. need sound canceling headphones uh anytime I'm eating out with people or have people eating near yeah. me. Um and that's my issue. Like right, I can't yeah. I can't my sister has the same thing, but she refuses to recognize that she has it and she just gets pissed off at people around her for just chewing normally like humans mm -hmm. do, instead mm -hmm. of addressing that this is her issue and she should not be pushing this on to other people. Right, yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, and basically, especially with the unfollowing, I probably would felt so bothered by that, especially that I thought it was my fault. Did I really do wrong to make this person feel some type of way? And then the reason why I brought this up ultimately is that for endorsement for the therapy and help and hearing somebody else's perspective, it put me at peace for something that was bothering me for a few years. And it was great. Hence why I share this story. Um, and hence why I learned a lot from it. And and I won't relive it, but I'm glad I would. I experienced it because it helped me grow a lot as a person. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty damn cool. And like I said, <laughs> uh, we got a lot better from it. So pretty, 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 pretty cool stuff. Pretty, pretty pog. <laughs> <laughs> pretty pog. All right. Um, good stuff. Now let us give a lot of praise and let's talk about something very near and dear before we get into more of the deep questions show. So one moment here, please. All right. And let's do this right now, everybody. All right. You know, it's always great to talk about life and the world's biggest questions with you guys and getting real deep and having some lessons and learning and being productive and so many questions, so little time. And speaking of time, it is the summertime and the summertime has arrived for many people. Summer means more travel, outdoor activities, and generally social vibes for a lot of us though, myself included, all the activity and traveling on top of balancing work can be incredibly draining. You end up in a summer haze, losing your ability to focus, and even the simplest of questions or problems can leave you stumbled like Ryan anytime I ask him to do a top 10 list. And just in time <laughs> for the summer, though, our good friends at Magic Mind have reached out and are back to help us out with our focus and let you achieve more in keeping us out of the haze of warm, sunny days. Now, I restarted taking Magic Mind after hiatus, started uh, taking it again after a couple weeks. And this is, just as I remember it, a really fantastic product. I got back into a routine with Magic Mind before my morning workout, and it really does work. A couple days in, 
And I can already see a clear difference in my daily energy levels, which is key because it isn't a quick boost or anything like that. This is the result of long-term improvement. I've even noticed that waking up is easier and every day since I started, and that is before I started taking Magic Mind in the morning, things got in so, so much easier, right out of bed again, not in a haze, not drowsy. I feel ready to take on the day. And my daily focus has gotten sharper since then, even with the show getting busier and getting busy with friends and doing summer activities, traveling, all of that. And the shot also tastes pretty good, by the way. It doesn't mess with breakfast or anything like that either. So take it and you're ready to go with a great green flavor. Magic Minds, vitamins, and of course, the signature nootropics help me get a lot more done with my day and keep me focused and sorry, keep me from losing focus or feeling fatigued as quickly. It is a mental performance shot not a caffeine booster, so Ryan doesn't need to feel bad about taking his morning thermos of coffee in the morning once he starts taking That's it. That's right. <laughs> in fact, some of the active ingredients in Magic Mind help energy last longer, add mental clarity, and enhance your body's natural resistance to stress. I cannot recommend Magic, Nine, Magic Mind enough because it gives me the extra boost we all need in a stressful world. It has helped me physically and mentally, and it really does set you up to tackle the day ahead. And you cannot beat that. So if you want to add a little extra boost to your life and improve your focus and energy to stay alert and on the go, whatever your plans are this summer, I recommend I recommend you check out the Magic Mind website and get this product. You will feel the benefits fast for your daily life, and I promise that you won't regret it. For any interested listeners of the Productive Nation, the greatest fans and listeners in the world, the Magic Mind team was gracious enough to give us a special offer for me to share. We could get you 48% off your first subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase if you want to try Magic Mind with the discount code PCMB20 at checkout. Make sure you head over to magicmind.com slash PCMB if you're interested in Magic Mind and use the discount code PCMB20 and great and get a great deal on an excellent product. And we also have the link and code in the description below, both on YouTube and all podcasts and platforms, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I use it, Ryan's use it, and hopefully Cara can use it too. Use I was gonna code. say you said it doesn't affect appetite in the morning? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I, I take Concerta to get out of bed right now, and I cannot eat until like after 7 p.m. with it. So No, it's it's <laughs> actually, yeah, it's very good. And uh, I'm going to say, I, I don't mind the taste, but also like apparently I was looking into like the ingredients when I was taking it. And it actually like helps. Some of the ingredients actually help with your coffee. So like yeah, you drink, I, I drink coffee stay awake. It actually makes that last longer, yeah, which is kind of cool. But just, anyway. Uh, as, as he was like giving your little uh, magic mind spiel, I was looking up like reviews and stuff. It's got really good reviews. So I'm yeah, actually we'll going to some. get some. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to get you some. A legit following too. And like I said, I started at the beginning of the year and I restarted taking it a few weeks ago. And I do feel more alert and ready for the day. So Kara, you and I can talk offline about that, but also yeah. just check out magicmind.com slash PCMB20. And uh, use the discount code. And it is a limited time offer for the people. This is a limited time offer. So go get this quick. And thank you to Magic Mind for giving us this opportunity. And now it's time for you to take the opportunity. So great stuff <laughs> there. Again, check us out in the episode description below. So let us continue our discussion. The next question I have for everybody. When you get somebody's number. And you don't save their name in it is not saving somebody's number an ultimate sign of disrespect. Like, for instance, if I meet somebody and we're interacting for a few days, a coworker, again, maybe somebody you're dating or a new a new person you meet and you don't save their number. Maybe you're in a random group chat with people. You don't save your number. Is that an ultimate sign of disrespect? Like, I don't respect you enough to put your name in here. I've heard people complain about this, by the way, on Reddit and stuff. How do you feel? I feel like it depends on uh, what the norm is for the person. Like I dated, I've been dating my boyfriend for like almost four years and I didn't have his number saved in my phone for like the first two. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I just like, I'm bad 
that I tend to use social media to talk to people more than texting. So, uh, uh, but I like, I mean, if you normally tend to text people, you're a big texter, that's like one of your main methods of communication. Then yeah, I think, I think it would be a little, a little rude. Yeah. Bit of a, uh, bit of a, like a, uh, tangent here, but this is true. My wife's name in my phone is her full name still like first and last yeah name from when i met her uh so i really find that very funny uh because she is my wife but her name is still like her first and last name in my phone um i'm just gonna be honest no i don't think that's a sign of disrespect um like i don't necessarily if someone says like here let me give you my number then i'll put their number in And I'll obviously put a name down. I'm not going to not put your name down. But, like, if I just get... Necessarily, I need to put their name down. Like, I mean, so, like, my cousins or whatever, like, when their wives now are in group chats, I, I made sure to collect all their info. Family. But, like, if a group of, like, friends and stuff is messaging... I. Uh, you're right here i don't need your number down written down i don't know i don't find it as disrespect like i'm not trying to be disrespectful when i don't do it it's just it never crosses my mind to do that like i feel like people whose numbers i have are people who are like here let me give you my number i'm like all right sure and then i put the number in like i don't know that's just me i don't find it disrespectful at all and if you do find it disrespectful like that's fine but i would like urge you to think like is it really meant to be like disrespect or Are you having a moment where you think you're the main character? And I think everyone, not everyone, but I think a lot of people who find it disrespectful would realize that they got some real main character energy coming off of them and they would probably reel it in. Because I'm not thinking enough about your phone number in our 20 person group message <laughs> to make an active decision that I'm not adding you to my phone. Like my day and my decisions had nothing to do with you. And that's true 95% of the time. So I would say, yeah, if you if you're offended by that, it, like maybe there's a reason, but it might be a little bit of you thinking that you're kind of like, you know, the main character in everybody's <laughs> life and you're not. Some people just forget. Some people just don't, you know, they're not going to go, you know, it's just not the thing that's in their mind to do. And I don't think that's disrespect per se. It's just reality. It's just true. Sometimes you're busy and you're just not yeah. thinking about the strange person like collecting everyone's number putting it in your phone that's yeah that's why opinion. i mean like i think i think it just depends on the like for the majority of people i don't think it's a big deal i feel like the only reason that like maybe you'd be fair and being upset is if like they're a huge texter and there's not really any reason why they wouldn't but i don't think the majority of people are like that nowadays i though Cara. so the, the two to, examples sorry. i want to use where this could be disrespectful three um One I heard about on my radio show, one of my radio shows, where the co-workers didn't save each other's number. And one, mm -hmm. because the producer and the host, the host just didn't respect him enough to keep his number. Yet, despite working together for two years to a point where every time he would need like a favor or food delivery, hey, what's your number again? Uh, <laughs> like, do you think that, well, yeah, that's If it's someone I mean. you have to message a lot, you should probably get their number. <laughs> yeah. Number two, I'm in this group chat of people I argue with all the time, the MAGA chat, <laughs> mostly for sports, and um, it gets pretty intense. I'm friends with everybody but one person, and the other person say we're not friends either, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we literally go back and forth, and that's the thing. I've never met this person. I know for a fact he wouldn't talk this much shit if he never actually met me. Yeah. Well, like, okay, play with it, pay with it, but don't take it too seriously. But um, we don't have each other's numbers saved because we don't like each other. <laughs> Sorry, you you were back and forth. Can you say that one more time? We had some connection issues. Anyway. Ryan, Carl, you see me? Is it me? I Sarah. Yeah, you're, you're frozen. But Matt, you do appear to be frozen. Oh, you're back. You just came out. Uh, no, but I was saying that in that case, yeah, obviously it's disrespect because you don't respect him and he doesn't <laughs> like each other. 
Um, so I will give you that, but I will say just what I was saying uh, with her, uh, with her partner, right? I will say if someone messages me individually a couple times in a row, like if we have a conversation, I usually then add their number. Hmm. So I will say that they, to me, like that, that's when I'm like, all right, we've messaged now like three times. We've had a conversation. Right. I should pro like a solo one-on-one -on -one conversation. I should probably put your name in my phone. Um, so I will say that that's me personally, just do with that info what you will. But yeah, the group message thing, Matt, no, yeah. I just, you don't have to add everyone who you're in a group message with to your phone. Yeah. And I mean, especially since you're, you guys were messaging somewhere else. So it's not like you can't find them again if you need to talk. To right. Them. right. But also yeah. they're in that message. You know who number you don't have. Their name you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. All right. Um, so why don't we move on for time's sake? My next question I have is what is your go-to conversation starter with somebody new? Like you meet somebody new, maybe at an event, maybe at a party, maybe at uh, work, I don't know, a game. What do you start the conversation with? So like me, hey, hey, you, what's your name? What's your favorite sports teams? That could be one. I know uh, one radio host. That's how he goes uh, goes about it. Hey you, uh, what's Mad your favorite Dog. sports team? Yeah, Mad Dog. <laughs> hey you, what's your favorite sports team? Yeah, and he's been usually, a radio host for forty years. So I start with pets, but I mean that's because my dogs are like the biggest part of my life. Like I feel like you take whatever is the biggest part of your life and you first try to see if there's any like common shared interest in that, and if there's not, then you go to like the more mundane stuff like. Oh, what do you do for work? Like, uh, you got any plans this summer? <laughs> I'm like, I, don't know. I almost don't want to share mine, but I have to, obviously. Please. So, I don't like. I think What's that's a totally wrestler? no. I think that's a totally normal way, Kara, to do it. Like, pick something important to you and see if you've got common interest. I typically try and read context clues. About yeah, where like we it, are. It, it, yeah, it does depend. And, like, if I'm meeting someone at a bar, I'm not going to walk up to them and go, you have any pets at home? <laughs> right. <laughs> or, hey, you, what's your favorite sports team? Uh, <laughs> no, you know, uh, I yeah. have... I have right, so like, oh, no, I'll let you go. Yeah, so we were like, we were at, I went to a, a, a somewhat fancy little gathering mm -hmm. um, for alumni of my wife's where my wife got her phd mm -hmm. and it was in it was local it was in dc it was in the one of the senate buildings oh, um nice. yeah and so we're there and i was talking to somebody and so what do i know about them i know they went to the school and i know that they're involved in government and politics etc that's pretty much it and so First thing I do is like ask them about something. I forget, honestly, I forget the exact thing, but I, I asked about something that was happening on Capitol Hill because I knew by and large, most of the people in that room worked there uh, or like at bar. Like if I've talked to someone at the bar, like waiting for my drink or whatever, like I'll usually see what they're drinking and I'll ask them about like that. Like try to find something that that person is immediately invested in at that very same yeah. moment to talk about that. And then I make sure to insert whatever I know about that subject. Yeah. Cause like, like into my head. So I could be like, all right, I'm, we're going to talk about vodka for the next three minutes until my, you know, until my Michelob shows up. Yeah. And like, uh, if you, if you want to keep the conversation going, then you just kind of have to start it. Cause if you know how to have good conversations, you know, like you can always, you can use, Usually, unless they're a horrible conversation, is like find something in their response that you can like tack on to, like furthering the convo. Yeah, I mean, you just you have to get to the point where you introduce yourself. Yeah, like mm. that's like this like conversation one on one. Like the conversation isn't real until like you've said your name and they've said their name, right? So you do have like, and you can't just start with. Hi, I'm so and so like that because that's what creepy. It's like that's what scary people do. Uh, so like you have to ha say something that lasts long enough that you can feel comfortable. Excuse me, saying like, "Hi, I'm you know Ryan. What's your name or whatever." Like, so that's I don't know. 
that's like the key. You have to make sure that you can talk about something for like two minutes or a minute and a half, whatever. It doesn't have to be long, but long enough that there's like back and forth. So then you could introduce yourself if you're actually trying to like get to know a person. But yeah, I try and basically steal whatever they're currently doing and talk about that. Uh, a lot of times it will be sports in fairness to Matt. I mean, I don't quite go, you know, what's hmm. your favorite sport, but I, almost every bar I go to has got sports on in the background. And yeah. so if I see someone, or even if they're not t- totally watching it, if I see something on TV, especially with another guy, I could be like, uh, you know, crazy, like crazy what happened to Otani, right? <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> it's like, and then like from there, we can talk about baseball for a little bit. Uh, and then from that point, I can go to the Mets, which uh, lets me tell them where I'm originally from, which lets yeah. me tell them how I moved to where I am now. Like at that point, you've got a whole path forward based on the fact that you saw them watching Sports Center. Uh, and so that's me. I don't try and like, yeah. I don't try and find what I'm comfortable talking about. I basically always start where I think they're most comfortable talking. Um, and I then I go from there. Yeah, and like, I'll, or I'll like, say uh, I have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> when I uh, use dating apps, uh, no matter how attractive the other person was, I would never swipe on someone that had like no details about themselves in their bio because, like, what do you say? What am I supposed to say to you? Yeah, like, my uh, boyfriend's a massage therapist. So on our first date, like, my, my boyfriend's a bit of a rambler. So I just kind of like asked him about his job and like how he got into it. And he just, went off and I just got to chill on our hike and enjoy the views while he just uh, did his thing. I respect that. Cause I yeah. too, am a bit of a rambler. But... <laughs> yeah. For me, to, you just really talk about what's going on in your environment for the most part. And I could go all day. I actually really love being amongst people who, cause public speaking to me is one of my favorite things to do. Talk with other people is generally one of my favorite things to do especially when a lot of people aren't like that. So also just reading the body language and the room, you could figure out who you can connect with. And most of yeah. them we're talking about non-romantic or showing interest in that. And the same thing you can honestly do there. You just talk about the environment. If you're meeting with the girls, like, man, this part is taking forever. Or um, it is easier to insult you know, things. I will say that. And that's bad about our society and we should try and fix it. But for now, it's true. It's easier to lodge a complaint with a stranger than it is sometimes to find like a positive common experience. Yeah. And that stinks. That That's where we're all at. But like, yeah, like this bartender is taking forever. Or, you know, if like someone is being absolutely messy in the corner. You could be, you can make a joke about like, I remember my first beer or something like that. <laughs> uh, so I will say that that's true. And that's a bad thing. You shouldn't do and, that. And I be, will we say should all be better, but that is something that is pretty easy to do. For me and my personality too, for what it is, sometimes I will go as random as possible. It's like, man, I have to break the ice one way or the other. Understanding this might not work well, but fuck it. Like, I don't know. I started like a conversation with somebody. You see love on the spectrum. I mean, it to something and luckily they did and interested enough to talk about that. And I guess so, that's just an example of something. I want, there. To dis- I want to dissect that because that's almost crazier than what's your favorite sports team. Because, again, I mean, at it's... least on TV in most bars, a sports plane. Right. Like you can kind of connect it to what's happening. So was this like was it a person of the like the opposite, you know, opposite gender that you were trying yeah. to flirt with or whatever? Well, I'll just see it like we were just wait- I mean, I mean, they were pretty at the time. We're both waiting for a drink. And I, I like, think it also so, like, it as well. depends on if you're like if you're if it's someone you're trying to flirt with as like a potential love interest or just like a neighbor, an older person. You're just trying to like you're bored. You want to have a convo with. Like I feel like I start conversations off a lot weirder, and I'm a lot more myself with people that could be a romantic interest to try to like weed them out if they're going to be freaked out by something i'm going to say even like not something super weird but you know right something right. yeah so Versus, in this you know how's the weather to a neighbor or whatever so in this case if somebody i know is interested or if there's somebody i'm interested this is my i don't really do this anymore because i was just like given i just go to the bar to have fun with the people i'm around with not to get laid um but some advice has helped me pretty much if you know, they're looking at you and just say, hey, here's me clearly waving. If they wave back, then that's an invite to say, hey, how are you? Whatever. 
and you go from then, then then you you open to more flirting opportunities. When it was something like that, this is me and her just by herself waiting. I was like, um, little contact, but not like establishing like, you know, qu- quite frankly, when they give you the eyes, you know. Oh sure, sure. I get this, that. It was more I just... of a friendly reaction, and I was like, I'm gonna ask a friendly thing, and then but maybe like that, I don't know. Something. I'd be like, I mean, obviously it was yes, but when you mentioned it was no, I'd be like, no, okay. Like, <laughs> you know, I would probably say it's like, why not? In a funny way, it's like, yeah. if I'm missing out. Well, if you say no, I don't watch it. It's like, why not? I'm missing out. I mean, I, I guess a lot that, of lessons. I guess bare, bare minimum, I, don't I guess know. that gives you something to talk while you're waiting for your drink. I, I can see what you're saying for but... sure. And it just ended with, hey, nice talking to you. Goodbye for forever. And um, Goodbye forever. <laughs> and then sometimes I might say that to some stranger too. Guy or goodbye, goodbye forever. forever? Because it's a joke. You know what you're doing here. You don't even know my I, name. Yeah, you know? well, I, I don't know. I've never done that. I've never hit anybody with a goodbye forever. I usually <laughs> say nice talking to you, and then I go back to where I was supposed to be. It was but... because of this, like, you know, New York City, not that cares. Like, that's that's more reason why I'm just, like, showing that goofiness, really. Especially, like, all these places. And I know those days are numbered, too, so... Might as well make it as friendly and open of a place instead of any putting any extra pressure. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, I, and I've said I'm probably taking a dating app uh, hiatus for a while mm. um, after this, so we'll have to figure out other ways to meet have to someone, dust so. off all those. You'll have to dust off that love on the spectrum line and hope nobody takes it the wrong way. Oh, yes. Um, we'll have to. S- We'll say, have you seen dog adoption videos? <laughs> I talked to a lot of strangers about the Drake and Kendrick feud. I'd be like, hey, a have you seen uh, Drake's Drake's leaked videos? <laughs> I didn't do that, but uh... hey, yeah, they say no, place. and I oh, say you should man. really check it out. Huge, <laughs> dude. This is basically why to share a story that I w- would have permission to share anyways, right? This is a rate of story. I'm just gonna share. It's right. actually another time. Um, next question. Um <laughs> I'll share it offline. So um my last question for today is what are your favorite snacks from the two thousands? And let me show you some examples from Google Images. If you you could just say, Hey, I remember that. Mm-hmm. All right, who remembers this is from BuzzFeed. Do you remember Hershey's Kissables? I don't remember. I do, yeah. but I did not like the Hershey's Kissables, actually. Really? I, don't I didn't like, like Hershey's that candy chocolate. coat. I didn't like the candy coat on the outside mixed with the milk chocolate. I don't like like M&M's or Smarties or anything like that. So I don't well, so think I it. do like M&M's, which is what makes the whole thing a little strange. But I did not like Hershey's chocolate yeah. inside that. I love peanut M&M's more, but I do. Peanut M&M's are great. That's probably my favorite candy next to um, Reese's. All right. Do you remember... Fruit Loop cereal straws. Nope. You know, I'm probably not Do even going to know a lot of these if this is uh, more of an American list. That's too, true. Eh? Could be totally American. But I had, they, they had the Fruit Loops one, but they also had, a, I believe they also had like a chocolate one. Yeah. Like, I don't remember the chocolate one. Yeah. We had the chocolate ones more than the Fruit Loop ones. Dude, but I did, we did have the cereal straws. Yeah. At the grocery store today, I saw this. Uh, I saw, we were on Fruit Loops. Fruity Cheerios. It's the exact same thing. Look at this. Yes, yeah, it's just, that's just Fruit Loops. Like, can you at least be a little more clever with this? Can you <clears> be a little more clever? I guess not. My slow internet not be cooperating, but some other that's things, right. right? But those were good. Scooby Doo gummies is a classic. Still around. <laughs> They're still around. They are. And the yeah. blue Scooby-Doo gummy, I don't know what flavor that is. I don't know what blue dog is, but that's the best flavor of gummy anyone's ever created. I loved the. They almost they had like a different texture. They were thicker. The Scooby ones yeah. were like the best ones by no a mile. gummies. No gummies ever look like what they're supposed to. They just look mm. like, like amorphous blobs. <laughs> Do the SpongeBob ice cream pops, and then and then you get you get them from the the ice cream truck, and you'd pull it out, and one eye would be in the center of his forehead, and the other uh, eye would be like halfway down. <laughs> Lazy. I want, to, I want hold on before we go. I want to bring another thing up. 
because I did not get these on the ice cream truck, but that's because the ice cream trucks always had the WWE. Oh man, ice cream pops, and it's like an ice cream sandwich on a stick. And they had like the wrestler, like Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin, John Cena. I think I had one at one point on the front, and I would always get that at the ice cream truck. But I did. I remember Sonic. I remember SpongeBob, the popsicles with like the gummy bit eyes or whatever. Yes, I do remember that. Mm-hmm. How about Trix yogurt though? The commercials were a staple on Nickelodeon. Yeah, I had a bunch of tricks. My my parents got tricks all the time. I <laughs> have hated yogurt my entire life. The smell of it makes me feel nauseous. I think it's su- probably super bad for you compared to like normal yogurt. I'm sure, but yeah. And then the Shrek the go-gurts. Go-gurts. <laughs> the Shrek gogurt specifically. I do remember the Shrek gogurts as well as just gogurt more like generically. Can you believe we're about to approach 20 years since Shrek two? Yeah, Shrek later. 2 is literally, unironically, the best sequel to any movie that has ever been made. You could definitely make that argument. You could really make that argument. You could make that argument. I, I know, I like, watched, there is a, uh, there is a YouTube, um, like, it's like an hour long, like, essay on why Shrek 2 is the greatest sequel that's ever been made. I and I thoroughly believe it now. Send that to me. I want to look at that. Jello pudding pops. Oh, man, man, man. Man, no. it really sucks to have a whole. It, I was also mu- not into them even before their spokesperson did. You know. Yeah. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Bill Cosby. You yeah, see the spokesperson. What? Yeah. Back this was before pops. this was before us, obviously, but he was one of the OG spokespeople for Jello pudding pops. I didn't right? know. That. They're literally yeah. cursed forever. Yeah, but they're about also not that good. So there's that. How about Ritz Handy Snacks. I don't even know what don't, this is. To be honest, I had them. I- I, them, I am but, very yeah. aware of them. I just hate the cheese. The The thing is, like, the spreader was a really bad spreader. Yeah. The van- I didn't l- like Lunchables Lunchables. I have a friend who's about to be 30, still eats Lunchables. I make fun of him every day. He I like I like the pizzas. Yeah, Come the on. pizzas are that's better not than the sandwiches. They're still disgusting, the pizzas. Oh, no, it's, no, they're yeah, all it's gross. it's still gross, but... but that's the only edible one to me. Grips. Grips. Never heard of those. I, I remember seeing. I have these. had these. I've eaten How about all these. Yogurt burst Cheerios. I don't even remember that. I do remember those. Oh, Kool Aid bursts. I can see these now. Somebody throwing I... them at people. The Kool Aids, <laughs> I think, like too sugary, even for I me. I don't remember. Those. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Push ups. I never had this. Yep. Yep. I had the. They have a swirl version too. Like, and like a and sour they don't swirl. make these anymore? I don't know. Jet puffed fan mellows. Oh, I hated those. They're I hated so those gross. Like marshmallows. I, I've I had them. They're have gross. These. They're gross. Hot Eating marshmallows poppers. alone. Sorry? Do those oh, really sorry, not sorry. exist? Hot chocolate pop tarts? Those still exist. Those are good. Yeah, I like those. Hot chocolate ones, I like ones, a lot though? of pop tarts. Yeah, the hot chocolate ones. Okay, then. But, Ryan, sorry to interrupt, but you were saying about the... um. I was saying, if you eat marshmallows, like, because they're flavored, right? So if you're just eating a marshmallow, uh, like, I feel like your day has gone poorly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Slow start. How about cinnamon TikTok? Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my. I, unironically, I I have a mint addiction. I, right now, like, I've been eating these. I'll probably finish these in, like, 20 minutes, and then I'll have diarrhea in, like, two hours. But I love mints, and... I like TikToks because they uh, don't give me stomach problems as bad as stronger mints. <laughs> no, the cinnamon ones are I great. Feel like I like them. Big Red was the gum of the early two mm-hmm. thousands in high school. Cinnamon. And then what's it called? Hot tamales candy. That's all. Ah. That's the red. That's good. The Hot cinnamon hearts. Tamales. I like. And just quickly look at what other two thousands. Jeez. Oh, I like. Do you guys know what dibs are? Dibs? dibs i don't know i don't know if that are. was a canada thing or not uh they're the they're like chocolate or um ice cream bites with like a chocolate coating oh. around them <laughs> yeah 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 i, I don't like dibs. dibs a lot i'm mean, yeah, like this yeah yeah oh, I've, I've seen dibs. these yeah i love dibs they still have miss, them are they, i haven't seen them in canada i know they got rid of chocolate fun tacos. dip freaking fun dip uh, oh mm-hmm. you guys don't have fun dip still uh I animals still what about animals i never had these with the commercials <sighs> You never had Danimals? No. Nah. We had hate we yogurt. Had, we had Danimals all the time. There was Gold always Danimals. 
the classic. And then you still have the OG still out there, the Cheetos, Doritos. I don't really see a lot of Cool Ranch anymore. I feel like it's only nacho cheese. I've seen, I know, I, I've seen some Cool Ranch out there. They're there. They're out in the wild like, still. I like Dunkaroos. <laughs> I still like Dunkaroos. I don't know if those still exist. Are those they still do. exist? They do. Yep. One thing they took away. I was like eight. Which I'm, they took away baked Cheetos, baked regular Cheetos. You could get baked flame and hot, but I love baked regular Cheetos. It was so Cheetos like a... is like pushing the flame and hot. Yeah, like flame and get... hot's everywhere. And Cheeto normal Cheetos or like white cheddar Cheetos or baked Cheetos, those are going away. It's just flame and hot everything. I, I hate never flame and hot liked Cheetos. Uh, Me too. I've never liked any gross. kind of cheesy or Cheeto except for like Hawkins cheesies. Hawkins cheesies that feels local. <laughs> maybe that's a canada thing but like I, i've gotten them ontario and bc but okay. uh they're only i hate cheetos i only like hawkins cheesies they're really 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 bad for you though oh. the hot i'm gonna look them up real quick hawkins cheesies yeah like h-a-w-k-i-n-s oh they're very very crispy that does sound pretty good i have never seen these they're so good they're super salty. They're super crispy. Oh, yeah. The tiny little ones are like giga crispy. It's like when you get a, a box of fries and the tiny fries taste the best. They are Canadian. Mm. Nice. Uh, W.T. Hawkins uh, Limited is the company that makes Hey, them. Carl, you ever watch South Park? Oh, yeah. You know the song Blame Canada? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How does it make you feel? Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Now I can also, always say I asked a Canadian bag. that. This is not, they don't make, these bags are not that big. Um, They have like medium sized bags, but they, okay. you know, a lot of like chips only fill them up like halfway. They yeah. fill them up like almost all the way. Yeah. It looks like it in the picture here. That yeah. There's... And, yeah. The good old days. Well, though, we do have to put a bow on this. Ryan yes. and Carl was a big success. Thank you so much for a amazing questions podcast. I think we got a lot out of it. Thank you to our sponsor, Magic Mind, for sponsoring this show. And we're back at it tomorrow with another tweet cap. And guess later on, what do you think we're going to talk about? All right, for Ryan <laughs> and Kara, we'll see you later. And my name is Matt Brown, and I'll catch you tomorrow. See you. See ya. See you guys.